All right, hey everyone, back again today with a new question of the day. I'm really excited about this one because it's about organelles, so let's get straight into it. Uh, again, and again, even if you're not studying for the MCAT, you just want to review organelles, so this is a great video to do that. So let's get straight into it. When one drinks too much alcohol, he or she puts a lot of burden on his or her liver. Um, this is because the liver tends to be responsible for getting the alcohol out of the body. Based on this information, a typical liver cell, which is also known as a hepatocyte, has which of the following organelles present in large amounts? This is a great MCAT question and also just a great test question in general because it's asking you to relate function of a cell at the organelle level to an actual um, cellular machine. Okay. Uh, and this is actually really important for you to be able to do. Uh, you want to be able to make the connections between very small and very large. If something has a lot of mitochondria, what does that say about its overall function? You know, some, th some things that have a lot of mitochondria will include your, your brain cells or even your muscle cells. And you, you want to think about why they have a lot of those. Uh, and just like that, that, that'll apply to all the organs. But with, with, with that being said, let's, let's examine the answer choices. So would, would a cell have a lot of mitochondria, chloroplasts, rough ER, smooth ER, or nucleus? So the way I wanted to do this is to actually go down the list of these organelles and kind of just talk about their function. Okay, so let's start with the first one. The first one is mitochondria. Okay. So the mitochondria, as most of you know, is the powerhouse of the cell. There's a massive joke about the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> because it's, it's the one thing that people always remember. But what does the powerhouse mean? It basically means that the mitochondria is a place where respiration happens. And respiration is where we put in glucose and we get out ATP, right? In the end, that's the, that's the overall summary of um, respiration. Uh, but more importantly, um, you might also know that bacteria, um, bacteria don't have mitochondria. It's a eukaryotic only thing. Okay, so it's found in eukaryotes, um, which means that it's found only in cells that have organelles, and more importantly, only in cells that have a true nucleus, which is what a eukaryotic cell is. Um, and the other important aspect of the mitochondria that you should remember is that the size is about 1 to 5 microns. And this should ring a bell to you because this is the size of most prokaryotes. So the fact that the mitochondria is about the same size as a prokaryote is something that falls directly in line with this thing called the endosymbiotic theory. And the endosymbiotic theory basically says um, that the mitochondria uh, were remnant prokaryotes that were engulfed by uh, another eukaryotic cell, and then they took up a beneficial function. Um, and the other, uh, the other symbiotic theory is supported by the fact that obviously the mitochondrion is very similar in size to a prokaryote, but also by the fact, but it's also supported by the fact that the um, mitochondria have their own circular genome or circular DNA and many of you may also know that prokaryotes have their own circular DNA and so the endosymbiotic theory does have a lot of um, it does have a lot of validity but above all else the last thing the that you want to also remember about mitochondria is they're involved in a lot of metabolic functions Okay, we already mentioned they're involved in respiration. They're also the site of beta oxidation for fats, which is where fats get broken down. They're basically the site of where a lot of things get broken down. Something has a lot of mitochondria, it's involved in a lot of energy usage. So your things like your eye cells will have a lot of mitochondria because you're using a lot of ATP in your eyes. Uh, neurons will have a lot of mitochondria because you're using a lot of energy in neurons with those action potentials. But believe it or not, hepatocytes don't actually have that much mitochondria. So mitochondria is probably not the right answer here. Let's go down the line. The next organelle was chloroplast. So right away, this is probably not the right answer to our question because chloroplasts are found in plants, not animals. And remember, in this example, we're looking at liver cells and livers, at least in humans, um, are part of mammals and mammals are animals. So the fact is chloroplasts won't be the answer here either. Liver cells will not have chloroplasts in them because liver cells are not part of plants. 
But with that being said, it's still, still important for us to understand what are plants involved in and will chloroplast and cells are involved in photosynthesis, right? And photosynthesis is basically taking sunlight, I'm going to abbreviate this, obviously there's a lot more to it, and turning it into sugar, which is freaking awesome. Like, how can you take something that has no mass and turn it into something that does have mass? Because sunlight is made of photons, which are massless, and you certainly turn sunlight into sugar, which is something that we harvest and need to sustain life. And somehow plants do that. It's amazing, and we we think it's phenomenal. Um, the other thing that... Um, the, uh, the chloroplast will be involved in. So remember how um, the mit mitochondria breaks down things like fatty acids? The chloroplast will build up um, fatty acids. So the chloroplast in many ways is the counterpart of the mitochondrion because photosynthesis is the counterpart of respiration and photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast. Uh, the other thing I also want uh, many of you to know is that the chloroplasts are also thought to have involved through the symbiotic, um, endosymbiotic theory. Okay, um, the in this theory, you know, we assume the mitochondrion arose because of this theory, but the chloroplasts also arose by this theory because a big eukaryotic cell just basically engulfed a um, cyanobacterium, and a cyanobacterium was a bacterium that could use light to produce energy. And so chloroplasts are thought to be uh, basically the descendants of um, cyanobacteria. Okay. Awesome. So chloroplasts won't be the answer here because liver cells won't have a lot of them, but at least we learned about their function. Now let's go down the list to this thing called the rough ER. So the rough ER does a lot of things. Okay, it's also only found in eukaryotic cells, so that's right away uh, a good thing because our hepatocytes, our liver cells, are eukaryotic. But the rough ER is called rough because it's studded with ribosomes. So now what are ribosomes? It's studded with ribosomes. Um, and ribosomes are involved in making proteins. So the rough ER is actually involved in protein uh, protein production. Okay. And now, is there anything unique about this these proteins? Well, all the proteins produced by the rough ER usually end up outside of the cell. Or they will end up in the cell membrane. So that's one thing you should remember. If any protein is going to end up outside of the cell, it will be translated by the ribosomes on the rough ER. Um, but if the protein is going to stay inside of the cell, then it will be translated not by a ribosome on the rough ER. Okay. And so the rough ER is usually involved in primarily protein translation, part of them, uh, especially if those proteins will end up on the outside. So next up, we have the um, smooth ER. So the smooth ER is not studded with ribosome and therefore it's smooth. So um, it lacks ribosomes. So the other thing that you should also expect is that the smooth ER is involved in lipid synthesis. So what does that mean? Lipid synthesis, lipids are one of the four macromolecules, and there are many different types of lipids. So I'm going to list a few. Some of them include steroids, right? So steroids such as testosterone and estrogen, which are responsible for the sex determinant, um, for the sex differentiations for uh, humans. Other types of lipids include cholesterol, right? So there's basically a lot of lipid synthesis going on in the smooth ER. Um, next up, the other thing I want to make sure everyone knows is that the smooth ER is responsible for detoxification. And you might be wondering, why is it responsible for detoxification? Because it has the enzymes that are responsible for detoxification. And so the enzymes that are responsible for detoxification um, are primarily in the smooth ER. So the smooth ER is going to be responsible for taking 
all the waste that you put into your body and getting rid of it. And believe it or not, that's exactly what the liver is doing, right? The liver is taking a bunch of alcohol, which you consumed or, or this um, person consumed, and getting rid of it. It's an aspect of detoxification. And so alcohol does fall into this category. So hepatocytes do have a lot of smooth ER because smooth ER is involved in actually um, detoxifying the human body. All right. And last but not least, we have the nucleus. So the nucleus is something that's found in all eukaryotic cells because that's what they're defined as. But one of the key points about the nucleus that's important is within the nucleus, you have this thing called a nucleolus. And within the nucleolus, we actually make the ribosomes. More specifically, we make the rRNA that may be found in the ribosomes. And the ribosomes are the protein-making factories and so the fact that the nucleolus makes them is absolutely imperative to know. The nucleus is also like the brain of the cell. And because it's the brain of the cell, you need to protect the cell very well. Because the nucleus ha houses the DNA. And the DNA is basically the blueprint of the cell. It tells the cell what to do. It tells the cell how to do it. It tells the cell exactly how to carry it out. And because the DNA is so important, we don't want anything damaging the DNA. So what we do to protect that DNA is surround the nucleus with a double membrane. So remember, the cell has one membrane around it. The cell has this one membrane around it, right? Well, the nucleus has two membranes around it. And so the nucleus is pretty heavily regulated, okay? And the only way you can get it into the nucleus is by, well, obviously, if you're nonpolar, you can go through these membranes. But these membranes also have pores. And so these nuclear pores regulate what gets in and out of the nucleus. And so now that we kind of went over all four organelles, and I kind of already hinted at what the answer was, let's go back to the original question. So this is the original question. And we talked about the mitochondria. Mitochondria is involved with being a powerhouse, right? Being a powerhouse has absolutely nothing to do with this particular situation because this is referring to the specific part of responsible for getting out the alcohol out of the body, right? That's an aspect of detoxification. And which organelle do we say was very imperative for detoxification? That's D, the smooth ER. And the hepatocytes do have a lot of smooth ER, but I encourage you to go down this list and think about cells that might have a lot of other things. What cell do you think would have a lot of mitochondria? We, we already mentioned neurons might. We already mentioned that muscle cells might. What kind of cells do you think would have a lot of chloroplasts? We already mentioned that plants might, right? Plant cells might. Uh, what kind of cell in your body do you think would have a lot of rough ER? Huh? It would probably be a cell that's involved in a lot of protein secretion. What kind of cells need to make a lot of protein? Muscle cells definitely need to make a lot of protein, right? Um, other, other cells might be endocrine cells that are responsible for making a lot of hormones that leave the body and um, enter the bloodstream. So you want to think about these because these are really good MCAT questions. Um, and so with that, I'm going to end the video here, and I hope you guys learned something. See you guys in the next one.